G'day, this video is on assembling the chuck out of the box. Now, first off I'd like to thank the numerous people that gave me ideas on how to do this video and to improve it. Um, they included professional wood turners, arty farty wood turners, just beginners and retailers and in one case somebody that knows nothing at all about wood turning. So, I got some good ideas from all of you. Thank you very much. You know who you are. Now, the Australian market has a number of chucks on it. The main two are the Technotool and the Vicmark. Now, there is differences between the two of them, and it's a Holden Ford sort of thing. Some people like Technotool, some like Vicmark. I personally use both, and I find that they both work as well as one another, provided you follow the rules. Now, the first thing that you notice when you pull them out of the box on the top is the instruction manual. It is important that you read this. It has safety information in it, shows you how the chuck actually works, how you mount it on the lathe, etc, etc. How to even pull it apart and put it back together again. Now, there's a wealth of information in here, and if you'd watched that first video on chucks, it also gives you safety guidelines of what not to exceed on the chucks. It gives you the lists of jaws and everything else. So have a good look at it. I'll put it out of the way. Now, when you open the box, you'll notice that all the tools are generally in the box to put the chuck together. We'll go through the Vic Mark first. Now, the Vic Mark comes completely assembled. All you've got to do is wipe it off with a cloth to remove the inhibitor and fit the insert in the back here, which I'll show in a minute and it's ready to go. I still do loosen off the jaws on these and do what I'm about to do on the Technotool just to make sure that it is right. Now the Technotool comes dismantled. The jaws are in a box, the screws on, on the magnet here are in a box. I always put the screws on a magnet for the simple reason that they have a habit of rolling off into sawdust because Murphy lives in this place. Now, you've got to wash all those off first. They're covered in oil or a grease and they must be cleaned before you put them on. The same goes with the chuck here. The other feature that you see in each box is this thing called a woodworm screw. It has a glacer thread on it, which means that it's a very sharp thread up near the top here, up in there, and they are very, very good for certain jobs. I'll put those out of the way as well because we're not dealing with them at the moment. That's covered in another video. Now, the first difference you notice is that all the chucks have numbers on the slides. These little things here are called slides, and you'll see a number on the, jaw, on the slide part there. You'll also notice that in most cases, the jaws have a number on them too. Now, because of my background, I always assemble numbers to numbers. One goes on one, two on two, etc. But I've got it on good authority that you can actually mix those jaws up and it shouldn't make any difference because of the machining of them these days. But I still like to put them in a numbered sequence. Now, therein is the first difference between the Vicmark and the Technotool. The Vicmark operates like a normal chuck. You screw it tight clockwise on the handle like that to tighten the jaws up. The Technotool goes the other way. It goes clockwise to undo it or widen it out and anti-clockwise to do it up. Now the next main difference is that you'll notice that there's a stop on these slides. That's as far as the Technotool goes open, which is a good safety feature because the jaws do not project past the chuck body. The Vicmark when you open it right out, the slides and the jaws, when they hit the stop, actually come out past the chuck body. And if you are not careful, and you get hit with one of these, I've only ever done it once, and that was enough. So be very aware of that fact. In fact, that is too wide for those jaws, but that's another video, so we'll get onto that in a minute. Now, tighten those back up so as I don't do myself an injury. 
Now, if you are changing jaws a fair amount, it pays to get an extra set of screws. These little screws here, like that, and they are different between the Vic Mark and the Technotool. It pays to get an extra set because what can happen is they can round out in here, in the little hex here, and they generally round out after you've tightened them and you can't get the buggers undone again. So, and on that subject as well, your Allen key here can round out on the end. Now that's a very easy fix. All you've got to do is put it on the grinder at a right angle, grind it down flat again across there, so that you get nice crisp corners back on the, the actual hex part. Right. Now we've washed off all our bits, it must be clean, we're going to assemble it. Now the way I do it, I put number one there, bring up number one jaw, number two jaw, put it on. Now this is the next difference between the Technotool and the Vicmark. The jaws are numbered and the slides are numbered on the Technotool, one, two, three, four. On the Vic Mark, they go back the other way. One, two, three, four. It's to do with the way the scroll operates, so that's nothing. Now, a little hint that was given to me by a good friend of mine. Put a little bit of Vaseline on the threads of the screws when you're putting them in. Now, this does two things. Helps them go in a bit easier, but... Those of you that change jaws will notice that these little screws can get very, very tight in the jaws. And when you go to undo them, what happens is that they bind in the thing. And in fact, they get that tight that when you undo them, sometimes there's a spark. So make sure there's no cloth soaked in thinners or anything flammable when you're pulling them apart. Right, sit all the screws in. Uh, there's some I prepared earlier. They've already got the Vaseline on them. Sit in the hole. Now, Technotool in their manual, see, there we go, back to this manual again, say that where the jaws fit onto the slide, there's a little indexing ridge here, on here, and one in the slide there. Now, they must go together. Technotool say in their manual that they could be a little bit tight, and you may need a rubber mallet to knock them in. Now I set all the screws in first. You've got to make sure the jaws are open wide enough that the jaws don't bind on one another when you go to tighten them in. Just wipe this excess Vaseline off my hands. Now the way I tighten them, sit the hex in the thing, screw it down. Now you'll notice that I'm only putting them in finger tight. And you do that by just twirling that around like that. So it all fits in nice and neat and tidy. Get in the hole. Bundle. Okay, now we're right. Just twirl it around like that. Put them all down finger tight. Don't tighten them yet. The biggest problem that, or the biggest complaint that most retailers face is the fact that the jaws run off centre and this is part of the reason because people don't fit them properly now the way to fit them properly is get them all in like that just finger tight get your chuck key whether it be allen key or anything else and tighten the chuck up nice and firmly the jaws now what I generally do is bump it a couple of times so tighten it up loosen it off so that there's no gaps down in these jaws here they're all seated in against each other then starting from the middle starting from the center there tighten each one now they just have to be firm you're not trying to strip the threads in them do all the center ones first You'll notice force of habit, I always start with number one and work my way around. Now, tighten them up firmly. 
And if you think you've forgotten one, go back and check it again, just to make sure. Now, oh, that one was a bit loose. Rightio. So, it's all assembled up now and ready to use, except for one minor thing, which doesn't come in the pack, you have to get that separately, is the insert that goes in the back. Now, there's a difference in the inserts. This is the Vicmark insert. On their larger ones, they have a lock screw down through here, which I'll show in a minute. On their smaller ones, they don't have that lock screw. Their assumption is that the smaller lathes don't go in reverse anyway. That lock pin is to stop the chuck from coming off the insert when you put it in, if you use the lathe for reverse. So, the most important thing is the differences in where they seat. Now, the Vicmark one seats against this shoulder here, up against the chuck body here. You can see the little mark that's left by the grub screw. So, that's the first difference. The Technotool one is on a spigot. It seats there, down this side here, and on this point here. So in the chuck, it's got a little rebate there that it that fits into and sits against the bottom there. It's got a double centering feature in it. Now, we'll put the inserts in. If I can get my hands to work. So that one's in. This one's in. Now you've got to make sure that the, if you're changing inserts, I find inserts fantastic. You can get chuck bodies that are dedicated threads, but inserts are very, very good for the simple reason that if you buy a cheap lathe, at least you can get a good chuck. And then when you change the lathe over, all you've got to do is just change that insert. They're about $24, $25. Dirt cheap, really. Saves you having to sell the whole chuck with the lathe. Right. Now, we've got the insert in. I open the jaws out. Like this. Get a steel bar. Five or six millimetres thick. Make sure that it seats right down onto the chuck, not out here, or you'll damage the jaws. Push it right in tight, lock the chuck up on it. This applies to both. Put it in a vise. Now, in the box is the bar to tighten that up. It also has another use. Now, you tighten that in firmly. The other use of this is to undo the chuck from the lathe when you get it on there. You insert it in there, give it a knock, and it'll come undone. I'll cover that in another video. Now, once you've got that in, tighten your lock screw down here, firmly, and the chuck is now ready to use. Now, as I said, the Vicmark locks through that section there, the Techno tool locks through that hole there, down through there, and there's a grub screw in the body there. It actually locks onto the thread of the inserts. Now, in the box, they supply two little fibre washers. That's where the fibre washer goes, down in there. You put the fibre washer in there first, then the grub screw on top of it. Now, Technotool... You can use the shifter to tighten that. Technotool sell a spanner for it. It's about uh, uh, somewhere between $15 and $20. Tighten the insert in the same as what you would do there as I did before. Lock it up nice and tight. Now, as I said, you can use a shifter on this to tighten it. Then put your grub screw in, if I can find the hole. Through there. Make sure that fibre washer's in there because if you damage those threads, you'll never get them out. Now, on that point too, whenever you are removing an insert, particularly on the Technotool, it pays to actually take the grub screw right out so that you know that it's clear. If, anybody, if any of you have ever galled that thread down in there, you'll know the trouble you have trying to get it in and out 
ever after. So make sure you take that grub screw out. If you followed all those steps, you should have a chuck now that runs true and straight. And if it doesn't, then start looking elsewhere. And that's covered in another video later on. Thank you for watching. Till next time, bye.